Uh, tonight, I want you to join me, if you will, uh, in 1 John, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, and we're going to begin, or I'm going to begin reading in verse 13. And I'm going to read some selected verses there. And the message tonight is entitled, Do You Need an Alignment? Do you need alignment? Of course, we've been talking about prayer uh, in the messages yesterday. And also, we will be speaking uh, on prayer the rest of the week. Uh, and if there's one thing that we all desperately need is to return uh, to being a praying people. Amen? Uh, we need to be a praying people. We need to be uh, uh, in praying churches. And we need to... Uh, Keep praying until we've got a praying country once again. Uh, so, uh, if you have your Bible open to 1 John, 1-Eyed John, the old preacher said, 1-Eyed John, chapter 5, verse 13. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of Him. Then skipping down to verse 18. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps him safe, and the evil one cannot harm him. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know Him who is true. And we are in Him who is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Would you bow your heads as we ask the Lord to bless the reading and the preaching of His Word. Lord, we thank you so much for this another day that you have made and we truly rejoice and are glad in it. Father, we thank you that this is an extra special day for on this day we have the privilege of assembling on a Monday night in, in a place of worship. And Lord, we have the opportunity not only to uh, fellowship with the people of God, but we have an opportunity to meet with you, Lord, uh, the master of the universe, the creator of all that is, and the one who sustains all life. Father, tonight we thank you so much for the privilege of being sinners saved by grace. Lord, we thank you for uh, the greatest love of all that expressed itself at Calvary. Jesus Christ, the perfect sinless Son of God, uh, spreading His arms wide, being nailed to a tree, bleeding and dying. He who was without sin, dying on behalf of those of us who were uh, filled with sin. And Lord, I pray, thanking you not only for his death uh, that brought pardon, but we thank you, Father, for the resurrection that brought a resurrection life into all of us who believe. Now, Father, we pray tonight that as we open the Word of God, that your powerful anointing would rest upon not only the words as they are read, but upon the preaching of the Word as well. I pray, Father, that you'd empty me of myself and fill me with your Spirit. Lord, I pray that you take control of my every thought. I pray, Lord, that you take control of my every word. Father, I pray that you take control of my every action. And Lord, as you uh, speak the word through this vessel of clay, I pray, Lord, that you just anoint the people in the pew tonight. Lord, I pray that you would open up their ears that they'd be able to hear the word of God. Lord, help them to be those who have ears to hear so that they might be able to understand. Lord, open up their minds tonight that they might be able to comprehend the Word of God. But most of all, Lord, I pray that you'd open up their hearts. Lord, that uh, what would result tonight would be transform living. Father, I pray that you might reach down upon these who are assembled here. And Lord, if there are those here tonight who do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I pray that this would be the day of salvation for them. The day that they turn away from their sin and turn toward the Lord Jesus Christ, inviting Him into their life to be their Lord and their Savior, so that they'll never again be the same. 
Lord, I pray for those tonight who may be here and they've just been in dry desert spiritual straits lately. And I ask, Lord, that tonight you'd revive them with the living water of life. Father, I pray tonight for those who may be sin sick, caught up in besetting sin. And I pray tonight, Lord, that you break the shackles of sin in their life. Lord, to just break the power that sin has over their life and help them to live in the freedom that Christ brings. Father, I pray tonight that when the invitation time comes and we have an opportunity to respond to you as you speak to our hearts, Lord, I pray that every one of us would say, Yes, Lord, that we get up from our pew and make our way down an aisle to an old-fashioned altar. Father, that we might do business with you. Lord, we love you tonight and we praise you and we look forward to what you're going to do in our midst this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, for the last 15 or so years have been driving the same old truck. It's an old Ford F-150. It's supposed to be maroon color, but it's mostly dirt colored because it never gets washed. I let Howard Scott bar it one time and they washed it and I feared that it might fall apart uh, because I think dirt and mud hold it all together. One of the things about that old truck is that there's always something that needs to be worked on. And, and I, I love putting nice tires on a truck. Uh, I love to, to get some all-terrain or some mud grip tires on my truck because uh, I don't normally drive by what the speedometer says. Uh, I drive by the hum of the tires. Now y'all all know what a 55 mile an hour hum is. Uh, there's a certain hum that mud grip tires make on pavement that tells the, uh, the indoctrinated redneck exactly how fast he's running down the road. But one of the things I've always struggled with uh, on that old truck was keeping the tires in good shape. And I learned a long time ago, I'd get to looking at my tires and right on the edge that tire would be wore down. And Brother Howard can tell you, every once in a while the wire would be showing. And, and they'd tell me, you need to get them tires changed. And I said, oh, there's plenty of life left in those tires. Eventually the air would just fall out of them because there wouldn't be anything holding it in. But I got to studying on that thing, why in the world the tires would be in such good shape in the middle of the tread and the edges would wear. And, and I found out that, you know, my truck needed an alignment more than every once in a while. And it just simply means that the truck is out of tow, that the, the, the tires are not tracking as they should in line with the vehicle and it causes the tires to wear. That's a very simple fix. You just take it to somebody who does alignments in a matter of just a few minutes on the rack. They can get the, the vehicle back in line so that you get the maximum amount of life out of the tires. Now, what is it that causes a vehicle to get out of line? Well, you run over something. Normally, it's something called a pothole. Now, I, I occasionally find a, hot, a pothole, but my wife has expertise. And she's not here tonight. We'll talk about her a little while. <laughs> but she has expertise in being able to find potholes. She goes out of her way. She'll run off the road to find a pothole. And, and I get in the car and the steering wheel is going like this. And I say, what in the world has happened? Well, I might have hit a little bump. A little bump. Uh, I, you know, I think she ran through the Grand Canyon with the thing or something. But, you know, she's run through a, a pothole or, or hit a curb or a bump or something and knocked the car out of line. You know, sometimes I think that in our spiritual life, you and I get knocked out of line by potholes. Now, you know, you may be here tonight, and we've been talking about prayer this week, and, you know, you've heard the messages yesterday, and uh, you've been considering and contemplating what the Lord might be saying to you, and, and, and you realize that your prayer life is not where it ought to be. That it's really not what God expects for it to be. As a child of God, you just don't pray as fervently or as often as the Lord would have you to pray. And maybe tonight, you're wondering why in the world uh, you're like that. 
Why in the world you don't have a greater desire to pray with fervency or frequency? You, you wonder what in the world may be wrong. Well, tonight, it may be that there's a problem in your spiritual life that requires an alignment. There are a lot of reasons why people do not pray as they should. There's a lot of reasons why uh, people uh, don't seek the Lord's face uh, as often as they ought. And, and primarily, the reason why people don't seek the Lord as they ought is because of the potholes that they encounter in life. I believe that there are a number of potholes. I, I can think of uh, about five, but you might come up with a lot more than that. But I want to share with you distinctly in the next few moments five of the potholes in life that will cause people to curtail their prayer activity in their life. I believe that the first pothole that a lot of people encounter in life that knocks them out of spiritual alignment and uh, causes them to cease praying as they should is the pothole of distraction. The pothole of distraction. We might put it another way. We might say that we are just too busy to spend time in prayer. You know, all of us have busy calendars. If, uh, I was telling somebody earlier tonight that we're talking about having to go to the doctor. And I say, you know, my mom and daddy, that's the, the story of their life. Uh, both my mom and dad are in their mid-70s. And uh, they've gotten to the point that they get up in the morning. The first thing that they do is look at the obituary column to make sure that their name is not in it. And if they don't find their name there, then they go to the calendar to find out which one of them has to go to the doctor that day. Uh, even though they are retired, they're probably more busy than they've ever been. Busy with the activities of church. Busy with the activities of health. Busy with the activities of grandchildren. Busy with the activities of life. And maybe tonight you struggle to get here because you've got so many things going on in your life that you didn't think there was any way you'd make it here tonight, but God got you here and, and He had a word for you tonight. And maybe the word that God is telling you is that the reason why prayer is not what it ought to be in your life tonight, my friend, is because you've allowed the distractions of life, the potholes of distraction, of busyness, of activity to keep you from seeking the Lord's face as you should. Preachers are the world's worst, Brother Tab. We get so busy with something good called ministry. We get busy with good things so often that we get to thinking that, hey, God's going to bless it by its very nature and we fail to seek the Lord's power to uh, own our ministry and therefore we're not as effective as we could be. And you may be here tonight and uh, you just uh, have been struggling to keep your prayer life uh, uh, as it ought to be. And the reason is you hit a pothole that knocked your spiritual life out of alignment and it is the pothole of distraction. I believe that more than ever before, the people in the United States of America are, are more distracted than they've ever been distracted from the things that really matter, especially prayer. There's yet another pothole that uh, people encounter that keeps them from praying as they should, and that is the, the, the pothole of discouragement. There's so many people, and possibly people here tonight, uh, who have become discouraged. We might put it yet another way. We might say that we're too weary to pray. You're just discouraged uh, about things in life. Uh, you're discouraged about the way your job's going. You're discouraged about the way your children are behaving. You're discouraged about the way your marriage relationship is going. You're discouraged about your spiritual walk. And, and you're discouraged about your health problems. There are so many things in life that, friend, they just discourage us. I heard this story one time about the devil having a yard sale. He was trying to sell some of the tools that uh, he had used and wanted to get rid of. 
The man came up and was looking at the tools that the devil had for sale and he saw that some of the tools were in relatively new shape and uh, he looked along and he found this one tool that was standing up in the corner and it drew his attention and he said, Devil, uh, I want to buy that tool. And the devil said, well, that tool's not for sale. And he said, well, why in the world won't you sell me that tool? It's just old. It's wore out. Certainly you can't have any use from that tool. And the devil told the man, he said, oh, there's no way I'd sell that tool. That's the most effective tool that I have. It's called discouragement. See, there are a lot of us tonight that just gotten so discouraged that we don't think it'd do any good to pray. We're just too tired of being sick and tired and, and, and we just say it's just going to do nothing else is working out. It's not going to do me any good to stop and take the time to address God in prayer because I'm just discouraged. Are you discouraged tonight? Has the devil got you down? Is your prayer life in shambles tonight? Do you need a spiritual realignment because you have hit the pothole of discouragement and you're too weary with life? to pray. A third pothole that we often hit that will knock us out of spiritual alignment is the pothole of disobedience. The pothole of disobedience. We might put it another way. We might say that we're too worldly to pray. Too worldly to pray. You know, there are a lot of things in this world that shimmer and glimmer and appeal to the, the flesh. A lot of things in this world that gather our attention and uh, we, we fall in love with the things of the world and like a child is attracted to something shiny, uh, we are no different. We find our way toward those things. We fall in love with those things and we find ourselves con consumed by those things. It may be tonight that there's uh, some disobedience, some sin that has entered into your life and, and it's eating your lunch. There's some person or something, some relationship, some activity that you've fallen so in love with that it has usurped the place that only God deserves in your life. It's taken first place in your life and it has knocked you completely out of alignment spiritually. Are y'all all right? You see, I believe there are a lot of people that are in that boat tonight and possibly there are many of us here this evening that need a realignment because we hit a bad pothole and it's called the pothole of disobedience. Are you out of line tonight spiritually because you've hit the pothole of disobedience? There's a fourth pothole that we often hit in our spiritual life that knocks us out of spiritual alignment and causes us not to pray as we should. And it is the pothole of disillusionment. The pothole of disillusionment. We might say it this way, we're just too angry to pray. A lot of people get disillusioned along the road of life. Maybe it's because somebody did them wrong. Because some relationship that fell apart years ago and they've never forgotten that dastardly deed that was done against them. They wouldn't spit on that person if that person was on fire. They wouldn't do anything for that person if they were uh, it, 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 the only person left on the face of the earth. They don't want anything to do with them. They're too angry with that person. And because their anger fumes in their heart and consumes them, they don't take the time to have a relationship with God anymore. There are a lot of people that are angry because of the things that have happened in their life. Maybe they lost their job. Maybe they lost a, a, their, their children went the wayward way. Maybe there was something that was taken away from them in life. There was something that made them think, well, life is just not fair. And they become disillusioned with life. They become disillusioned with relationships. They're just angry with everybody. And they're angry with God. They're disillusioned and they're out of spiritual alignment. You show me somebody that hits the pothole of disillusionment and I'll show you somebody that doesn't pray very often. Amen. There's another pothole. A lot of people have hit this pothole. It's called the pothole of despair. Despair. 
We might say it this way. We say, I'm just too broken to pray. Perhaps it's because of the death of someone that you love very dearly. Maybe you're just uh, in despair because that person is gone from your life and you just can't bring yourself to turn your heart toward heaven uh, because of the grief that's in your heart. And, and you don't even know that you can pray. All you can do is moan and groan over the grief in your life and you hit the pothole of despair. You don't know how you can go on. Maybe it's because you've been to the doctor and the doctor said, well, i got bad news for you. There's so many of us uh, that have relatives or maybe you're here tonight and you've gotten that bad news and, and you say, God, why is this coming in my, into my life? And you just feel your life uh, going out of control. You just feel like you've run off the tracks of life and the world is passing you by. You're in despair. You don't know which way to turn and you can't possibly bring yourself to bring your voice toward heaven and pray anymore because you're just so fit filled with despair. You're just so broken that you can't go on. And a lot of people tonight need a spiritual alignment because they've hit the pothole of despair. They don't know how to get back in the line. You see, I believe that in life there are the potholes that we hit on a regular basis. And they cause us to lose our desire to pray as we ought. God knew that we might have these problems. It was no surprise to God. He knows that these potholes exist and He gives us a word in many places throughout the Bible as He does here in 1 John chapter 5 to encourage us along the way. I want to show you first of all, if after we've looked at the potholes of, uh, that cause us to be out of line, that cause misalignment, I want to talk about the results of misalignment. Tonight, if you've hit one of those potholes and you have been knocked out of alignment spiritually, there are probably going to be four things, one of which, one or more of which are going on in your life spiritually. Number one, whenever you and I have hit the potholes of life and we've been knocked out of spiritual alignment, we may be experiencing a lack of assurance in our life. A lack of assurance. I want you to look in verse 13 again if you still have your Bible open. He says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may, what? Know that you have eternal life. See, God wants us to know. His Spirit testifies to our spirit that we have a relationship with Him. Amen. Friends, there are sometimes though when we are, have, have been out not praying as we should and things have been going on in our life. We've been going through those difficulties that we've just talked about and, and we don't know what's going on but we just don't feel as close to God as we once were. And it may be that the old devil comes and he's whispering in our ear lately, you know, if you were really a child of God, these things wouldn't be happening in your life. If you really knew Jesus, you wouldn't be experiencing these problems in your life. The problem is, friends, that whenever we hit the potholes of life, we get knocked out of alignment spiritually. We're not praying and conversing with God as we should. One of the first things to go is our assurance of our salvation. You show me somebody that's walking in the will of God, somebody that's on fire for Jesus Christ, and I'm going to tell you what, they've got an assurance that is beyond belief. Amen. Say, you going to heaven when you die, brother? I guarantee you. I, I'm going to heaven. The Lord's made it clear. But you find somebody, you take that same person and let him hit a pothole in life and let something happen to knock him out of spiritual alignment. You might find him six months down the road and he might just be as sad as sad can be. You say, you know, I just wonder if it's really real in my life. Friend, maybe tonight... You've been struggling with your assurance of late. And it may just be because you've hit a pothole in life and you've been knocked out of spiritual alignment. Yes, it is possible that that might be the Spirit testifying to your heart. 
that you need to be saved. But I believe that many times in the life of people who have truly been saved and have been walking with the Lord because they are knocked out of spiritual alignment, the old devil comes and he steals the assurance of their salvation. Friends, I believe that whenever we get knocked out of spiritual alignment, that one of the first things that we have a problem with is a lack of assurance. Secondly, uh, whenever we get knocked out of spiritual alignment, I believe that we experience unanswered prayer. Verses 14 and 15, if you'll look there. Y'all still awake? Y'all all right? Amen. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask... We know that we have what we asked of Him. Now we talked about a little bit yesterday that we can't ask for uh, selfish things in prayer. If we ask for uh, something selfish in prayer, then we're not praying in God's will. Uh, prayer is intended to accomplish the will of God on earth. It's our participation in getting the will of God accomplished on earth. But it is not about us dictating to God what we would have Him do on earth. And that's not what prayer is all about. And we need to understand that if we've been praying and we're not seeing what we ask for taking place, it, then it means that there's very likely some disobedience, some sin, some selfishness in our life because there's one thing that God wants to do and that is He wants to answer the prayers of His children to accomplish His will on planet earth. Amen. It may be tonight that you've been praying for some time and it just seems like God didn't hear your prayers. You can't remember the last time that you prayed and God gave you an answer. Man, I guarantee you, we might could diagnose the problem tonight. You've been knocked out of spiritual alignment and you need to be put back into a proper alignment. A third result of misalignment is the reign of sin. The reign of sin. Look in verse 18. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps him safe, and the evil one cannot harm him. Now, I want to be honest up front tonight. Most of us, uh, we, we hadn't reached sinless perfection. Matter of fact, I'd go so far as to say all of us have not reached sinless perfection. I don't know anybody that will in this life. But you know what? The thing is, that the closer we get to Jesus Christ, the more we hate sin, the less we find ourselves involved in sin. We find ourselves heartbroken when we do fail, and we're, we keep short accounts of our sin when we're walking closely with Jesus Christ. But friend, when we get knocked out of spiritual alignment, if you're listening, say amen. amen. When we get knocked out of spiritual alignment, we allow sin to come back into our life. We allow the old flesh to reign over the Spirit's control in our life and we begin to embrace once again things that we thought we were through with. We find ourselves going back down some old paths that we thought we'd never go down again. We find ourselves hanging out with individuals that we thought were a figment of our past. We begin to let sin reign over our life again and one day we sit down and we say, what is wrong with me? Why in the world do I keep going back to the same sin over and over and over? I can tell you what the problem is. We've been knocked out of alignment spiritually. And we need to be put back into a proper relationship with the Lord. There's a fourth thing that is a result of being knocked out of alignment and it is the loss of spiritual awareness. The loss of spiritual awareness. I want you to look in verse 20. Verse 20, the Bible says, We know that the Son of God has come and has given us, what? Understanding. So that we may know Him who is true. Now, one of the things the Lord does for us who have the Spirit of God living inside of us is He gives us spiritual understanding. He allows us to look around us and be spiritually aware. 
We begin, we can listen to the conversation of an individual and we can hear the still small voice witnessing to our spirit that that individual is, is struggling with sin and that we need to share Christ with that person. We find a person out there on the street who is going through hard times and we sense the Spirit of God uh, telling us that we need to minister to that person, that we need to help that person in some way to show them the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have the discernment to be able to listen to someone uh, and we can tell if they're speaking in the Spirit or if they're speaking in the flesh. You see, God didn't leave us. The Bible says He gave us the Counselor. When Jesus went back to glory, He sent the Spirit in His place. Therefore, you and I have spiritual discernment. You say, man, my spiritual antenna has not been working lately. I just hadn't been able to hear the Spirit speaking to me. I hadn't been able to sense what's going on around me. I hadn't been able to discern uh, the activities around me. I don't know what God is up to anymore. You know what may be wrong? You've been knocked out of spiritual alignment. And you need to be put back in to a proper alignment. I want to make a statement. And I want you to think about it, and I may want you to remember it. I think it'll help you. Knowing Jesus results in our alignment with God's purposes. Amen. Now, now I'm, I'm not just talking about having a, 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 a saving knowledge of Christ, but I'm talking about getting to know Jesus. I remember when uh, I first met my wife... And uh, she and I began dating, and I've never been one that liked to talk on a telephone. I despise a telephone. Matter of fact, I don't even have a cell phone. I don't care a cell phone. Last one I had, I lost it quail hunting. I think the hogs got it. Some hog out there talking on the cell phone, I guess, nowadays. I don't like to talk on the telephone. But you know what I did? When I, got, when I fell in love... I talked on the telephone. I, I, I remember driving from Columbus, Georgia, to, from the hospital to Eufaula, Alabama. Y'all remember the old bag phones? I had one of those. Don't you wish we could go back to the old bag phones? They'd never drop a call. I, I remember talking to her all the way to Eufaula, and I said, let me hang up this phone. I'm home. I'll call you back on the landline. And I found great delight in talking to her. And you know, that's how I got to know her. I found out the things that she liked. And I found out the things that she didn't like. And I found out the things that we had in common. You know, if you don't talk to somebody, you're never going to get to know them. The only way that I'm ever going to know the purposes of God... For me in this world is by getting to know His Son, Jesus. Amen. And that means I'm going to have to talk to Jesus on a regular basis. I'm going to have to read the book, the letter, the love letter that He wrote. And as I read it, I'm going to have to, uh, to listen to the Spirit as He woos me, as He draws me closer to Himself. And that ought to result in my desire to, to seek Him with my whole heart. And I begin to pray, and I begin to get to know the Lord all that much more. And as I get to know Him more, I love Him all the more. The more I pray, the more I love Him. The less I pray, the less I love Him. You know, there's no better example in Scripture than that of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hold your place there in 1 John chapter 5 and go over to John's Gospel for just a moment. John chapter... John chapter 6. Now, Jesus the Son and God the Father have a perfect relationship. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
And when Jesus was walking upon the earth, when He was God in flesh, walking among us, you know how God the Father did His work through the Son? Well, we find it here in chapter 5 and verse 17. Jesus said to them, My Father is always at His work to this very day, and I too am working. And then in verse 19 He says this, Jesus gave them this answer, I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by Himself. He can only do what He sees His Father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. For the Father loves the Son and shows Him all He does. Now, in order for Jesus to be able to know what the Father was up to, He had to have a perfect awareness that came through a perfect relationship. He could see where His Father was at work. He could see what His Father was doing. And He carried out perfectly the will of the Father on earth while He was here because He was able in that love relationship with His Father that was never broken, He was able to do exactly what God wanted Him to do. Now, you know what the Bible says? Jesus told His disciples and He says to you and me, you will do greater works than these. Wow! How? Because the Spirit came. And, and there, Jesus was one person, one body on earth trying to minister to one person at a time. But we are millions of people who have been Spirit-filled on this earth who are going out and continuing the ministry of Jesus. And we're accomplishing great mighty things in this world. If we are in a proper alignment with our Lord. But I venture to say that the great majority of us are not in proper alignment. I believe tonight that there are a whole lot of us in this place who say, Brother Jeff, I've listened to what you say tonight and I think I've hit some potholes. I think I have not my spiritual vehicle well out of line. Some of those uh, results of misalignment, you preaching right to me. How do I fix things? What's the solution? How can I get it right? Well, I'm going to show you the solution. We're going to put you on the rack tonight. Any mechanics in the house tonight? We've got a mechanic. Praise the Lord. He knows all about alignments. Well, we're going to put you on God's rack tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And I want you to look, if you will, in John chapter 15, in verse 7. I'll read you one verse. Ready to get on the rack? One person? If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. Now, what's that mean? Well, the first part of it, to remain in me, is essentially saying that we need to love God. Amen. And if you have allowed your love for God to wane, then you need to fall back in love with the Lord all over again. You need to return to the Word of God and read it as if for the first time again. And you need to go back and, and start praying to the Lord. And, and it may be that in the beginning you just have short prayers and you find that yourself getting distracted, but you need to be persistent and go back to seeking the Lord's face again. And as you communicate with Him more and more, you're going to find that you can't do without Him anymore, that you're going to fall in love with Him all over again. That's what it means to remain in Him. But it's also another condition. 
He says that my words must remain in you. That means that not only do you begin to fall in love with God all over again, but you've got to live for God. Amen. It's not enough just to know what the Bible says. Not enough just to go before God in prayer. But He always tells us that we need to go forth and live out the Word in our life. That whatever He commands us, that we ought to obey Him so that the world may see that He has changed our life. We, we obey God not out of compulsion, but we obey God because we love Him and we want to please Him. Y'all still awake? Say amen. amen. When we return to loving God, that is remaining in Him, and whenever we begin to obey Him, that is to live for Him, all of a sudden we'll find that the damage that had been done by the potholes of life is going to be repaired in our life and we're going to be right back in a perfect spiritual alignment with our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to hear His voice again. We're going to see our prayers answered again. We're going to see His power upon our life again. We're going to find great things taking place in our life because of the pleasure of God on our life once again. And I believe tonight that if we're all honest, we really need an alignment. Amen. 